Maxfield Parrish was an American painter and illustrator active in the first half of the 20th century. He is known for his distinctive saturated hues and idealized neoclassical imagery. Born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on July 25, 1870, he was the son of a painter and etcher, Stephen Parrish. He was raised in a Quaker society. His given name was Frederick Parrish, but he later adopted the main name of his paternal grandmother, Maxfield, as his middle name and later as his professional name. Young Parrish's parents encouraged his talent. In 1884, his parents took Parrish to Europe. He toured England, Italy, and France. Parrish was exposed to architecture and the paintings from the old masters. They returned in 1886. In 1885, his work was on the Easter edition of Harper's Bazaar. He also did work for other magazines like Scribner's Magazine. He also illustrated a children's book in 1897, Mother Goose in Prose, written by Frank L. Baum. By 1900, Parrish was already a member of the Society of American Artists. He attended the Haverford School, Haverford College, in 1888. He studied architecture there for two years. From 1892 to 1895, he studied at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts to further his education in art. He studied under artists Robert Vono and Thomas Pollock Anschutz. After graduating from the program, Parrish went to Anasquam, Massachusetts, where he and his father shared a painting studio. A year later, he attended the Drexel Institute of Art, Science, and Industry with his father's encouragement. While studying at Drexel, Parrish met his future wife, Lydia Austin. The couple was married on June 1, 1895, and moved to Philadelphia. They would go on to have four children together. Parrish moved with his wife in 1898 to Cornish, New Hampshire, and built a home that was later nicknamed the Oaks. The home was surrounded by beautiful landscapes that inspired Parrish's drawings. He suffered from tuberculosis for a time in 1890, and while sick, he discovered how to mix oils and glazes to create vibrant colors. Parrish entered into an artistic career that lasted for more than half a century, and which helped shape the golden age of illustration and American visual arts. During his career, he produced almost 900 pieces of art, including calendars, greeting cards, and magazine covers. Parrish's early works were mostly in black and white. Parrish took many commissions for commercial art in, until the 1920s. Parrish's commercial art included many prestigious projects, among which were Eugene Field's Poems of Childhood in 1904, and such traditional works as Arabian Nights in 1909. Books illustrated by Parrish are featured in A Wonder Book and Tanglewood Tales in 1910, The Golden Treasury of Songs and Lyrics in 1911, and The Knave of Hearts in 1925. Parrish worked with popular magazines throughout the 1910s and 20s, including Hearst's and Life. He also worked with a number of advertising companies like Wanamaker's, Edison Mazda Lamps, Colgate, and Onida Cutlery. Parrish worked with Collier's from 1904 to 1913. He also painted advertisements for D.M. Ferry Seed Company in 1916 and in 1923, which helped him gain recognition in the eye of the public. His most well-known artwork is Daybreak, which was produced in 1923. It features female figures in the landscape scene. The painting also has undertones of Parrish blue, a color of blue that was named after Maxfield Parrish. In 1920s, however, Parrish turned away from illustration and concentrated on painting. In his 40s, Parrish began working on large murals instead of just focusing on children's books. His works often featured androgynous nudes in fantastical settings. He made a living from his posters and calendars featuring his works. Parrish used Kitty Owen as a model in the 20s. Susan Lewin also posed for many works. She was Parrish's assistant from 1918 to 1934. In 1931, he declared to the Associated Press, I'm done with Girls on Rocks, and opted instead to focus on landscapes. Though never as popular as his earlier works, he profited from them. He would often build models of the landscapes he wished to paint, using various lighting setups before deciding on a preferred view, which he would photograph as a basis for the painting. He lived in Plainfield, New Hampshire, near the Cornish Art Colony. 
and painted until he was 91 years old. He was also an avid machinist. He often referred to himself as a mechanic who loved to paint. By 1935, Parrish only painted landscapes. Parrish's art is characterized by vibrant colors. He achieved such luminous color through glazing. This process involves applying alternating bright layers of oil color separated by varnish over a base rendering. Parrish usually used a blue and white monochromatic underpainting. Parrish used many other innovative techniques in his paintings. He would take pictures of models in black and white geometric prints and project the image onto his works. This technique allowed for his figures to be clothed in geometric patterns while accurately representing distortion and draping. Parrish would also create his paintings by taking pictures, enlarging, or projecting objects. He would cut these images out and put them onto his canvas. He would later cover them with clear glaze. Parrish's technique gave his paintings a more three-dimensional feel. Parrish's works continued to influence pop culture. Parrish's most famous painting, Daybreak, sold in 2006 for $7.6 million. The National Museum of American Illustration claims the largest body of his work in any collection, with 69 works by Parrish. Some of his works are located at the Hood Museum of Art in Hanover, New Hampshire, the Cornish Colony Museum in Windsor, Vermont, and a few at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Maxfield Parrish passed away on March 30th in 1966.